the PO2 of the outside air drops from 160 millimeters of mercury to 104 with the humidification and of outgoing air mixing with the incoming air. At the alveolar level, we can see that the PO2 remains constant by a steady cycle of breathing in and out. The partial pressure in the alveoli is noted within capital A. Incoming deoxygenated blood from the pulmonary artery has a PO2 of around 40 millimeters of mercury. But this value can be even less during exercise when our muscles took more oxygen out. The partial pressure in the veins returning to the heart from the rest of the body is noted with a lower case V, or PVO2. Even though it is the pulmonary artery that's bringing blood to the alveoli, we still use the V notation as the oxygen content is the same as the veins that were going to the heart. Outgoing, freshly oxygenated blood going to the pulmonary veins go to the left side of the heart and out to the systemic arteries. This has a PO2 of around 100 millimeters of mercury. The notation for the oxygenated blood that will go to the systemic arteries is a lowercase a. The total PaO2 will always be slightly less than the alveolar oxygen levels as this includes some of the areas of the lungs that had a ventilation perfusion mismatch. Incoming blood is indeed slightly blue due to the amount of oxygen attached to hemoglobin in the red blood cells. As the oxygen in the alveoli cross over into the blood, it binds to hemoglobin in the red blood cells and turns the blood bright red. Think of this process happening continuously as red blood cells enter and exit the alveolar capillaries like a conveyor belt. During exercise, this process speeds up as blood moves more quickly. Oxygen is transported through the blood two different ways. 97% of the oxygen is transported on hemoglobin inside the red blood cells. The other 3% of oxygen is transported by just being dissolved in the plasma. Our blood is almost half red blood cells, which makes our oxygen delivery capacity very high. When we go to high altitudes, our bodies make even more red blood cells so that we can carry more oxygen. Some banned performance enhancing drugs for athletes also increase the number of red blood cells, which increases the endurance and exercise capacity for those athletes. Oxygen binds to hemoglobin in red blood cells. The oxygen disassociation curve is a graph that shows the relationship between how saturated hemoglobin is in percent to the partial pressure of oxygen in millimeters of mercury. In an alveolus in the lung, the incoming blood has a PO2 of 40 millimeters of mercury, which corresponds to 75% hemoglobin saturation. After the blood is oxygenated, it leaves the lungs with a PO2 of 100 millimeters of mercury and a corresponding hemoglobin saturation of 97%. The sigmoid shape of the oxyhemoglobin disassociation curve is important. If there is a change in the PO2, or at an elevation of 10,000 feet, the alveolar PaO2 is 61 millimeters of mercury, that doesn't seem that bad at just over 90% oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. You can see that if this is the most that arterial blood can be oxygenated to, that it does not leave much left over after the cells have used up what they needed. This is a generalized example to illustrate how you can use the curve. Low ambient oxygen levels, such as at altitude, can actually increase the binding ability of hemoglobin so it can get even more oxygen out of the alveolus. This change in the oxyhemoglobin binding changes the curve, causing it to shift leftward. This means that at 10,000 feet, an alveolar PO2 of 60 millimeters of mercury will actually be at a normal 97% because the hemoglobin binds to more oxygen than it would have at sea level. This allows the blood returning to the lungs to be around 20% saturated rather than under 20%, allowing for a little bit more reserve, sort of like having a little extra gas in the tank. The factors that aid the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin is first the concentration gradient. The high concentration of oxygen in the alveoli drives oxygen out to the blood to bind to hemoglobin in the red blood cells within the capillaries. 
decreased temperature even slightly will increase the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen, allowing more to bind and be transported out of the lungs. Less hydrogen ions or an increased pH will increase oxygen binding to hemoglobin. Carbon dioxide in the blood enters the alveoli to be exhaled. When carbon dioxide is in the blood, it makes hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. As the carbon dioxide leaves the blood and enters the alveolus, the hydrogen ions disappear, thus making it less acidic in that area. This allows more oxygen to leave the alveolus and bind to hemoglobin to be transported out of the lungs. These factors facilitate the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin, thus increasing hemoglobin saturation. The lower temperature and lower hydrogen ion levels will cause the oxyhemoglobin disassociation curve to shift left, aiding in the binding ability of hemoglobin. A rightward shift of the oxyhemoglobin disassociation curve occurs under conditions that favor oxygen unbinding from hemoglobin. It happens at the working cells of the body that are receiving the oxygen for their energy production in the mitochondria and that help create conditions that would help to unload and deliver oxygen. Oxygen jumps off hemoglobin when it gets to the capillary beds serving the cells of our bodies. The disassociation of oxygen from hemoglobin is facilitated by a number of factors. The high PO2 in the blood compared to the low oxygen levels in the cells creates a gradient where the driving force pushes oxygen from the blood to the cells. Even a slight increase in temperature can promote the unbinding of oxygen from hemoglobin. The working cells of our body generate heat as a byproduct of ATP, so this helps the cells get their needed oxygen. When you exercise, you increase the local temperature of the working muscles, causing even more oxygen to jump off hemoglobin and enter the cells. A reduction in pH or increase in the amount of hydrogen ions will also help oxygen to unbind from hemoglobin. Hydrogen ions are formed in the blood when carbon dioxide is present. When cells make carbon dioxide as a byproduct or waste product of energy use, it goes out to the blood and becomes hydrogen ion and bicarbonate. The more hydrogen ions present, the more acidic the conditions become. The increased hydrogen ions or increased acidity or lower pH will facilitate oxygen leaving the red blood cells to enter the working cells. Again, with exercise, the working muscles make more carbon dioxide so the local areas are more acidic, further aiding cellular oxygenation at a time when they need it more. Myoglobin is an oxygen binding protein found in the aerobic muscles of our body. The slow twitch muscle fibers and cardiac muscle cells contain large amounts of myoglobin. Myoglobin binds to oxygen with a greater affinity than hemoglobin does. This makes oxygen move from the hemoglobin into the red blood cells to the myoglobin in the aerobic muscle fibers like a magnet. This allows those muscle cells to extract even more oxygen. You can see the muscles containing high amounts of myoglobin when you eat chicken or turkey, which is in their legs. The dark meat is dark because it has myoglobin. The heart is the darkest of all because it contains the most myoglobin because it is the most aerobic muscle that we have. Each of these factors aid in the delivery of oxygen to our cells by helping oxygen to unbind from hemoglobin. This is often referred to as a rightward shift of the oxygen-hemoglobin disassociation curve. The hemoglobin found in a fetus is different than normal postnatal hemoglobin. Fetal hemoglobin has a higher affinity for oxygen. It is a stronger magnet for oxygen than regular hemoglobin. This allows the fetus to be able to take the oxygen off of the mother's hemoglobin to ensure that the baby gets adequate oxygen levels to survive. This relationship is seen as a leftward shift in comparison to regular hemoglobin. After the baby is born, fetal hemoglobin is removed and replaced with normal hemoglobin. This is important for the baby because when the hemoglobin binds so well to oxygen like fetal hemoglobin does, it's harder for that oxygen to unbind from hemoglobin when it gets to the cells outside in the capillary beds. 
when fetal red blood cells are being destroyed, the byproduct bilirubin is increased. The liver removes this from the body. The rapid rate of destruction of the fetal hemoglobin can often overload the liver. In a newborn, not only is the liver still developing, but the large amount of work needed to break down bilirubin can often cause a backlog. This buildup of bilirubin causes jaundice. Jaundice is a condition where there is a yellow pigment to the skin and to the whites of the eyes because of the bilirubin buildup. This is easily treated by exposure to UV light, like a tanning bed. The UV light will break down the bilirubin so the liver does not have to work so hard and it can more easily be removed from the body. Here is a schematic for the destruction of red blood cells. They are removed from the circulation and destroyed in the spleen. The bilirubin is a byproduct and it's taken to the liver to be eliminated via, from the body via the GI tract.